You can find the product featured in today's video and so much more at Dan's Dinosaurs. Follow the link in the description below to peruse his expansive selection of all things dinosaur model and figure related. Should you choose to order anything from his site, feel free to mention in the comment box at checkout that your friend Killer Shrew Fan sent you. Now, on to the review. Hello everyone and welcome once again to Killer Shrew Fan's 12 Days of Reviews. While planning this year's lineup, I initially intended to review PNSO's new Therizinosaurus Jinji, but shipping delays had me a bit concerned it wouldn't show up in time. Luckily, I had a potential substitute arrive a few days ago from the secondhand market, that being Nanmu's Mordred. But as fate would have it, Jinji would end up arriving right on his heels. Now, with two possible subjects to review, I decided to leave it up to all of you to decide which one I should talk about. And, well, it went a little something like this. Jinji won in a landslide, so Mordred will simply have to wait his turn. And just as well, because Therizinosaurus has certainly had a banner year, first appearing in Prehistoric Planet before making quite the debut in Jurassic World Dominion, and finally getting a model treatment by both GR Toys and PNSO. I am glad I held off on the former, as this one seems superior in every way. But following the massive success of Jacques, it still has some big shoes to fill. And today, we're going to decide if it lives up to our expectations. So here we go, it's Killer Shrew Fan's 12 Days of Reviews, and this is PNSO's Jinji the Therizinosaurus. So going in for a closer look, it's worth repeating that Therizinosaurus is known from quite fragmentary remains, and that unfortunately does not include the skull. As such, PNSO have opted to base this design off of Ehrlichosaurus, and you can see that reflected in the slight downward curve to the mandible and the suggested sharp angularity beneath the keratin of the beak. Meanwhile, the eyes are tiny and done in an orange coloration with pinprick pupils, a lot more straightforward than the dino Tyrus. The jaw is articulated and opens to reveal a long flat tongue between rows of tiny teeth. And I'm happy to report that there's no separation between the tissue of the pseudo cheeks this time around. The throat region beneath the head is left bare, almost like a pelican's neck, and I almost wish for a more vibrant coloration in this area, perhaps to suggest a tie-in display function of some sort, sort of like what we see in the included artwork. The sculpt work of the integument is as nice as ever from PNSO. Like the Dinochirus, the majority of the figure is covered in downy feathers, but unlike the Dinochirus, this figure lacks any pinaceous feathers on the arms or tail. Instead, the feather filaments simply grow in length as you move onto the arms and down the length of the tail. And this is certainly a fitting choice, seeing as this is basically what we see preserved in the related Bapiaosaurus. I do love the tail on this figure, where the longest feathers simply dangle downwards like a big floofy feather duster. I absolutely love this area of the sculpt. The layers of overhanging feathers and uneven edge give it a very believable look, and the downward droop really gives the feathery coat a distinct sense of weight. I can just see these feathers bouncing with each step of this massive animal. Of course, the real showstopper of Therizinosaurus would be its namesake, those near 20-inch long scythe-like claws, and boy oh boy did PNSO do them justice here. The overall shape and girth feel reasonable when accounting for the keratin sheath, and the fact that they look so wicked long on this figure is awesome. I'm also a big fan of the color transition here. It's great to see PNSO taking such care on this distinct feature rather than just doing, say, a plain cream color or something like that. Looking at the underside, you can see that the feathering stops above the pectorals, leaving more naked skin running across the insides of the arms and stretching tightly across the swell of that deep, round gut housed beneath the wide pelvis.
The naked skin then continues onto the tail before being swallowed up by the overhanging feathers. The legs are relatively stocky and mostly covered in feathers, with the sturdy ankles being naked and covered in amazing scaling details and gorgeous folds of skin that form with the planting of the feet and toes. And speaking of the toes, the real noteworthy facet of these feet is the fact that they boast four weight-bearing digits, a key feature of Therizinosaurus that unfortunately gets overlooked from time to time. That said, the figure is still sculpted walking in a digitigrade fashion, while the included artwork seems to recognize the plantigrade posture as suggested by Senikov, so it appears PNSO is a bit wishy-washy on this particular topic. And speaking of the walking style, let's talk about the pose. You can see that the posture reflects the more vertical orientation of these dinosaurs, but as for the pose itself, the Therizinosaurus is sculpted mid-stride with the left arm flexed and the right half bent. This feels like a happy medium. And what I mean by that is, with Therizinosaurus, there is an understandable temptation to pose them brandishing those famous claws in an exaggerated manner, even if they most likely weren't used for anything so intense as defense or sparring. This pose still allows them to be emphasized with the positioning of the arms, but not at the cost of looking overly dramatic or aggressive. It's also very well balanced, although I do highly encourage using the included support rod if you plan to display it for an extended period of time. So that's the sculpt of this thing. Overall, it delivers the goods we've come to expect from PNSO. That being incredible detail work and a keen attention to accuracy, barring the whole question of plantigrade versus digitigrade. It also captures the most defining facet of Therizinosaurus to a T. And even without some big pose to emphasize them, those claws still command your attention and respect from the shelf. As far as the paint job goes, it's predominantly earthy tones with a mix of greens, browns, and some warm highlights on the face, neck, and tail. The naked underside is then done in a rosy flesh color. Compared to the likes of Jacques, the design is a bit basic, but I think this is a paint job that shines more in its application than in the color scheme itself. The transition between the shades of green and brown and yellow are handled so wonderfully that you don't even notice the simplicity. I did mention that I wouldn't have minded a more distinct splash of color somewhere on the figure, and whereas I stand by that, I think PNSO did a solid enough job as is. As far as the size of the figure goes, it measures about 5 and 3 quarters inches tall, or just under 15 centimeters, and then comes in at around 8 and 3 quarters inches long, or just over 22 centimeters, in a straight measurement. At an estimated 30 to 33 feet in length, that would put this figure in the 141 to 145 scale, although determining scale on such a fragmentary dinosaur is a thorny game as always. For size comparisons, I'll start by bringing in the other Therizinosaurus I have at my disposal, that being the Papo offering. Weirdly enough, this Papo version was my personal favorite iteration of the animal despite some inaccuracies and relatively dinky claws on a rather extreme pose. And whereas there are still some redeeming qualities to it, I think PNSO has finally dethroned it. That being said, I do find it interesting that the two have such similar palettes. It's almost like PNSO is saying, no, 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 Papo, try that color scheme on this sculpt. Then we have the recently reviewed Dino Kyrus from PNSO, and you can see how flamboyant that figure looks in comparison. Regardless, the fact that PNSO tackled both of these odd ducks and in such rapid succession was a real treat. And now for another contemporary. Here it is with Schwanzi the Tarbosaurus, and I think these two play off of each other really well. Even if Therizinosaurus didn't use its claws to fight, it almost looks like Jinji is displaying them, as if daring Schwanzi to give him a reason to. 
And there's a nice Namekt group shot, and that is one good looking trio there. Schwanzi made it onto my top 10 list of 2021, and I wouldn't be surprised if one or both of these newcomers land a spot on my 2022 list. And why not? Here it is with the Terra by Batat Nanchiungosaurus, just for some other related comparisons. And for the heck of it, here it is with PNSO's Tyrannosaurus Rex Wilson, for no particular reason. Then just another random, unrelated comparison, why not? Here's Gingy next to Eofana's Giganotosaurus. And why not? Let's bring all three of those together. I feel like this could make for an either really cool or really underwhelming climax in a movie. Someone get a pen. And... Oh, hello there! Wait a minute, what are you doing here, 135 scale Shrek? Gingy isn't 135 scale, you get right out of here with that. <laughs> and that was PNSO's new Therizinosaurus, Gingy. All in all, another stellar model in what's already been an impressive year for the company. I don't think it reaches the same heights as Jacques, but it's still easily the best Therizinosaurus on the market, and a figure that I definitely dig. As always though, be sure to let me know what you guys think of the figure. Do you own it yet? Are you planning on picking it up? What has been your favorite feathered friend from PNSO, and why? Drop a comment down below, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you all again tomorrow. We'll be heading back to North America for a review that's been eight years coming. So if you can wait another day, I'll see you all then on Killer Shroofman's 12 Days of Reviews.